Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. I know it's been a little bit since we last did a video. Summertime gets very busy and we're out sailing and uh, just not a lot of time for boat building. I have for a little while now been thinking about uh, making some modifications to our Haven 12 and a half. Um, after being out and sailing on it a few times, you start finding those little things that are slightly irritating or just simply could be better. So I'm gonna make a couple of modifications and uh, I expect this is maybe gonna take a couple of videos. Today's video is uh, we're gonna concentrate on getting an electric outboard motor. So anyway, uh, that it has its complications as far as mounting it and a lot of this video is going to be how I come up with a solution for getting this dude um, to where I can set it on the, on the transom. So anyway, we're glad you're here. If you happen to be new to the channel, welcome. And if you're coming back, uh, I'm sure you're probably happy to see a video about, our, about the Haven. She is just beautiful. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, leave your comments, and uh, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us greatly. All right, let's jump in and look at a, an option for an electric motor. So I uh, got this in the mail today. It's from E, e Propulsion. Wow. It's pretty heavy duty. Pretty heavy duty. Man, that feels stout. We're gonna try and put this on the Haven. I'm gonna to have to make a mount for it some kind of way, but I at least wanted to get it out and look at it. This feels like one of those times where maybe I should read the directions a little bit before I go crazy. Yeah, we can open up the box on the battery. So this is the battery to it. Not super heavy. E propulsion. My friend Steve, that I did all the work for him on his uh, Ensign, Pearson Ensign, he's got one of these, and that boat is uh, at least a couple thousand pounds heavy. And this little motor just pushes that pushes that boat right along. So I feel sure we won't have any problem with the Haven which is over there, where they mount the motor on the side here. I almost think I'd rather have it on the transom, but the transom's raked pretty good. And this is a 45 degree angle. Man, I've had this cover on here, it's still dusty in here. Um, so I'm not quite sure how we might do that. So that's gonna take a little figuring. But it sure would be nice to be able to motor out of my cove at the lake. Sometimes the wind's pretty light in there. The first time we took this boat out, we nearly went in the rocks. So um, it quite honestly has kept me from going out more. I still just remember that. I'm kind of scared of it. So we'll go take this little book and read it. Okay, so I've been thinking about how to mount this thing, and I really do think I want it on the transom. I did get the long shaft, so part of this consideration is, is this propeller needs to be down below the water line. We are well below the water line the way she sits right now. Where the blue paint is on the rudder, that's water line and below. 
I've seen a side mount that you can buy to put like here and then mount your motor out here. Uh, I've got a picture of it that I'll stick in the video. $664. No thank you. I worry about having it off the side and how it would behave if it would be difficult to steer. I think with the rudder, we'd be able to steer it however we wanted to, but uh, I really would rather have it on the transom, I think, if I can figure it out. So I'm thinking about making a, a bracket that will mount on the back side of the transom and then will allow me to mount this back here a little ways. I really feel like I've been overthinking it. I think it's sim as simple as getting a couple of pieces of wood cut out at 45 degrees and making a box and mounting it on the back of there so that that thing can just sit in it. Well, I found a few scraps of wood. This is a nice piece of white oak, mahogany, more mahogany. This is out of this tree I cut down so many years ago. I've been saving this for a little while. It's probably about an inch thick. It's got a bit of a warp to it. I'm gonna go up here and look and see what I got up in this other little stash. I forget what I threw up there. What's this? Oh my. That's white oak. Wow. Oh yeah, here's this cherry. That would work and it might be a little lighter weight. I might use that for the actual mounting piece that it, that it mounts on. <laughs> There's the haven. What a pretty girl. Sometimes I start looking around and I realize I've just got too many scraps of things. There's a piece of mahogany still in some plastic that I've never even opened. That's a one by six. I'm thinking this piece here may be it. And I thought about using this white oak that I found up there on the shelf, but the transom is mahogany. So we might as well make it match. And I think, I think this piece, especially if I double it up where the motor actually mounts onto it, should be really good, should be plenty. Okay, so I pulled the motor back off of here and I just got it laying on the workbench. Um, I'm thinking, okay, how, how thick do I need this, this mounting board to be? And I, that's about as far as I want these threads to go down. I mean, I could go just a little bit more, but we're gonna, we need at least it to be that thick. So we're gonna measure that, see what that looks like. About one and a half. Yeah, if I make something one and a half, I should be good. Okay, so how thick is this junk? Oh, well that's three quarters. So if I double that up, I'm gonna be one and a half. Oh yeah, that's great. All right, so we've decided seven inches. It's right there. Okay, so these are going to be my two pieces that this actually sits in. Okay, so see that's working good. So they will, it will mount on that like so. Oh yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, so I like this distance if it had the extra 45 degree angle on it. But rather than cutting another piece of this mahogany, I'm just gonna use a little piece of pine I've got laying around here and cut a test piece and just see if 
what I think is the right length really is the right length. Go over here to 45. Good. And then, so I want that dude pretty much right on the end of where the saw is going to come down, just about like that. So that should mount on the transom, which is really at about 45 degrees, and then this other structure will mount behind there. Let's go see if this is a good distance. So see, here's what I mean. We're gonna mount those on a board that's there, and that's just gonna stick straight out from the transom, like that. It won't get in the way of any of the rig, it won't get in the way of the tiller, or the rudder, but this way we'll be able to mount this thing right back here, straight down. We'll be deep enough to be below the water line. This should be super strong, and I'm only gonna have a couple of drill holes in my um, transom to hold the, the facing board on. <laughs> Perfect. Now we just saw that up and we should have those pieces done. Okay. So we got that on. So these dudes are going to mount on here like this. And we're going to glue all that up and it's going to be beautiful. I almost used that whole board anyway. Hello, doggy. Hello. Say hi to everybody. Come here. Come here. Come on. Say hello. Say hi, everybody. It's Toby. Oh. Okay, so that's basically it. That part on the top is going to be bolted through the transom. And we'll uh, drill some screw holes in there and get it basically mocked up and see what it looks like on the transom before we epoxy it. I may take and Clean off that angle at 45 degrees. This here. Just give it a kind of cleaner look. Of course, that's going to be at the bottom, so probably not noticeable at all. I'm thinking that should work. Now comes the time when we drill holes in the boat. Have I ever told you how much I hate drilling holes in boats? All right, so we got a level on here and we're, we're really in pretty good shape with that. I found four quarter inch bronze bolts. So I believe we're gonna be able to use those. And they've got a head on them that I can countersink back into the, into the transom face so it's not gonna look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these holes drilled all right, so I started out with this countersink bit and I got three holes started. Now I'm gonna change to this quarter inch bit and we should be able to go all the way through. How about that? Oh man, yeah, that's gonna be great. Fantastic. Clearly below the water line.
and the handle sticks up there to where I can grab onto it. We'll still have the use of the rudder. May have made this thing just a little deep, but I like being able to get my hand in there. So I think we're gonna be good. Well, now I'm gonna take it all apart, glue it up, sand it, put some epoxy in there and varnish it. Awesome. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.